guys were battle hard and also these are most likely uh, or they were the regiments that fought at Brandywine they had they fought at the Battle of the Clouds these guys knew what they were doing they were professional soldiers and then they had the what they called the Highlanders now the Highlanders were a specialized corps of uh, Scottish or uh, the English soldiers they were from a different part of England uh, these guys uh, during um, in England they wore uh, the skirts kilts I guess they called them but during this cam uh, campaign they had pants I guess it was a little chilly and they, they had to put the buckskin breeches on but they still had uh, the different colors and they had um, uh, kind of a beret type of hat now these were advanced fighting soldiers they came right at you they were fer ferocious they were when you saw these guys uh, a lot of uh, the Continentals ran they, they knew that this battalion was a, a tough battalion now, around 10 o'clock on September 20th, there was pickets. Now, a picket is a, a group of guys that are stationed a little way up from camp in different areas. It would consist of usually uh, light infantry and usually uh, a dragoon or some type of cavalry. Now, these guys, if they spotted the enemy, they sent the cavalry back to camp to say, look, we see them. They're in the area. Let's get ready. Now there was about five or six pickets in this area. Now they were generally uh, to the north, west, east, and south. Now uh, generally uh, these pickets would pick up on movements. They would hear that uh, different. Uh, they would hear different things. They would get intelligence, and a lot of it was sent back to Anthony Wayne in this division. Now uh, during this time, when the British were amassing uh, towards Paoli and Lancaster Pikes that uh, there was no intelligence. Uh, basically, this was a surprise attack on the, on the, on the camp here. There was nobody that was uh, alerted. Now, the pickets uh, were kind of alerted when they uh, heard firing at them. They were actually shot on. So basically, there were shots in the distance, and that kind of most likely uh, alerted some of these guys. But uh, they were probably used to hearing different shots going off all the time. But uh, the pickets were fired on by the uh, lead infantry, uh, the light infantry, at which time this was around 10 o'clock. Now they were in formation. The British were in waves. They had uh, the 1st Battalion of Light Infantry. They had the 42nd. They had the 43rd. And then they had the Highlanders there afterwards. Now they would have came into camp right behind me, down in the corner down there. They amassed in that area. Now uh, during this time, like I was saying, there was a blacksmith who led the army to this position here. Now, we don't know if he was coerced to do this or he was a British uh, loyalist, but uh, afterwards, I think he was shunned by the community. I think they really knew what he, what he did for the British. Now, during this time, the British, it was a surprise attack. So what they wanted to do is they, uh, they wanted to be as silent as possible to come into this general area. Now, the man leading the charge here was, uh, it was a, 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 a Gray, I think his name was, uh, it was, he was called No Flint Gray, and he was a commander on the British side, or he was a you know a high-ranking officer. He uh, uh, he told the, the the troops, the British troops, to remove their gun flints. Now, what this entails is just uh, taking a, a flat piece of metal and turning and pulling your flint out if you're a uh, firelock musket. At which time they did, and they uh, used a weapon of choice with the British infantry. They used the 16-inch bayonet. Now, the Pennsylvania soldiers here would have had Kentucky rifles. They would have had rifles from home. They would have had different uh, Pennsylvania-type uh, weapons. Now, these weren't designed to have bayonets on them. So they were basically, it's either shoot or run. They couldn't make a charge on uh, the British. The British fixed bayonets. They lined up in ranks about a mile to two miles away for a nighttime raid. Now, taking your flint out of your weapon means that now you're 50% a soldier. You're, you're more of a slaughterer than you are uh, an actual soldier firing your gun. Uh, it would take a while to load these weapons and put your flints back in. And these soldiers, these British soldiers knew that. They had to come into camp with their bayonets. Around 11 o'clock uh, during this time, uh, the camp was probably hearing gunshots. They heard the pickets in the distance fire on the British that were invading this area. Now, during this time, uh, some of the men were alerted and some weren't. Uh, the British came in to the southwest of this position. The 1st Infantry Battalion came in and stormed the area around 11.30 uh, to op almost about 12 o'clock. Uh, the basic intimidation factor was they had cold steel. They had 16 inches of a bayonet coming at you. 
Now, Anthony Wayne's division of 1,500 guys were all in this field that you see behind me. Now, when you hear things and you don't know what's going on, that gives an element of surprise. Now, these guys probably got out of bed pretty fast. They were probably dressed in a night shirt and usually their buckskin breeches. They, weren't, they didn't, wouldn't have their continental uniforms on. So you can just imagine it being dark here. It's not like we have today where there's homes in the distance that light up things. This would have been absolutely pitch black. The only thing that you would see is the center of your camp lit by, uh, by, lit by campfires. So all they saw in the distance was cavalry. Uh, the British cavalry came in here, uh, the, 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 the dragoons. Uh, the light infantry would have stormed this position. Now, uh, I want to show you uh, uh, the rest of the battlefield and explain where the British troops came into this area. And we'll get into that in another video right now.